I'm Maddie Milan, and you're listening to the Goddess Unearthed podcast, where we talk about tapping into your inner power and living life by your own rules. Welcome back to a new episode, episode four to be exact, of the Goddess Unearthed podcast. I'm actually kind of proud of myself that I made it this far. I Well, I was going to say I wasn't sure if I could, but no, I really knew that I wanted to make this work. In fact, I thought it would be easier than it was, but sitting down to film last week and then again today has been a challenge. This is the second time I'm recording this episode. I tried filming earlier today. It just was kind of a mess. I talked for 35 minutes. I don't think I said anything interesting or important I kind of just rambled and talked myself around in circles which is not the worst thing in the world but it's not it's not what I want this podcast to be and I think the reason that happened is I was trying to make this episode a little bit more light-hearted and you know easier for me to record than the last episode but what I didn't want to do is kind of just talk my way around in circles like this episode is going to be a little bit more relaxed a little bit less structured I didn't make a full plan I just made a couple of notes we're gonna do a chill little life updates and my current favorites episode today but before we hop into that I did just want to say a big thank you to everyone who listened or watched last week and to the comments and kind messages I received afterwards I am not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous to make that episode. I was both nervous and excited. I kind of just wanted to get it done, put it out there, and just so I could feel like, okay, from now on, moving forward, if someone follows my content, and I mean, especially if they like any of my podcast-related stuff, I'm kind of just going to assume that they know my past even though a lot of them will not have listened to that episode I can kind of just stop stressing about it and move forward but that is a lot easier said than done and like I mentioned last week I'm not ashamed of my past in any way I just kind of it was this weird secret that I was kind of I was kind of keeping the secret on purpose but also I just like it had never come in certain circles of my friends the subject just had never come up so it's not something you just like break into conversation like hi like nice to meet you by the way I take photos in latex and post them on an OnlyFans account like that doesn't really naturally come into the conversation very often so yeah I'm glad to just kind of move away from that I mean I'm not really going to be moving away from that because over this next month I am going to be posting a lot of latex Halloween costumes. The goal was like a different costume every single day. Nothing dramatic, but just like using the pieces I already have to build costumes for either like superhero looks or some like celebrity looks, stuff like that. So you'll be seeing a couple of those videos either on my latex TikTok or if you watch the YouTube version of this podcast on the same the same account that I post the podcast, you'll be seeing shorts that I'm just like reposting the TikToks to YouTube shorts. So yeah, there'll be a lot of that coming out in the next month and I'm kind of excited about it. It's just like a fun little way to like get to play dress ups as an adult. That's kind of how I think about cosplay is it's just like adult dress ups and some people get really into it and I'm definitely not a part of the cosplay community. I would like to be, I think it would be fun, but I don't go all out. I'm not into like, well, I haven't previously been into creating like exact replicas and things like that. I did make one sewing tutorial where I recreated Diane, Diane of Seven Deadly Sins. That's a character in an anime and I made her little, she has like a little jumpsuit and I sewed the outfit and took a bit, couple of pictures in that a couple of years ago. That's just made out of lycra and yeah, I thought that was really fun. That's probably the closest I've ever got to making any kind of cosplay, but 
I do get pretty into Halloween, despite the fact that I grew up in Australia in a time when Halloween wasn't really a thing. I've been to maybe two Halloween parties in my whole life, both since grad, like since graduating from high school. So Australians don't typically celebrate Halloween, but I am going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of this month. So stick around for that episode, because honestly, growing up in the Southern Hemisphere kind of sucks sometimes. Like, just because so much of the media is made in either the United States or comes out of Europe and you're constantly seeing opposite seasons and it's like people forget that there are a lot of countries down here who have reverse seasons and it'll be summer at the end of the year. So today when you're listening to this episode, it will be October 1st, so the first day of the best month of the year. My birthday is in October, so we've got a couple a couple of weeks, 10 days before my birthday, and I could not be more excited. I do love my birthday. I love to celebrate. I love the springtime. I love the weather warming up. The flowers are all out. And yet, whenever and yet every time I go on social media, I'm going to be seeing, oh, full looks, pumpkin spice lattes, which are honestly gross. Not a fan. And everyone's talking about how cozy and what. No, like that is not my reality for October. October for me is sunshine, hot girl walks, hopefully not having to wear this big puffer jacket when I go out on my daily walks or jogs. And yeah, it's my birthday. Summer is around the corner and all good things. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about just that whole concept of like the Southern Hemisphere and kind of growing up constantly with FOMO in the last episode of this month, so that'll come out just before Halloween. But for today, like I mentioned, I want to do a little bit of a life update. So yeah, the the weather is changing. When I was recording earlier today, it was a pretty nice day. The sun was out. It was blue clear skies not that warm though still only like 15 degrees but I could see the lemon tree through the window the vibes were vibing but now the sunset because I'm again refilming this at like 6 6 30 or oh, 7 o'clock right now I am still drinking a little bit of iced coffee which is maybe not the smartest move but I have a bit of work I want to get done after I record this episode so one of the things that I already mentioned is that Lately, I've been working a lot on filming Halloween looks in my latex. Nothing dramatic. Again, I'm not doing full cosplays. It's just like fun little outfits of ways you can dress up specific pieces. And again, you could recreate these same looks without it being latex. If you have any kind of black jumpsuit, you can pretty much do the same thing. Or black leggings and a top, like you can kind of it, just the base of the outfit in this case happens to be latex but for most of the looks you wouldn't necessarily need it to be but it's fun it's like yeah playing dress ups I get to come up with all these looks be a bit creative but it does take a long time to film because if you know nothing about latex as I'm sure most of you don't it takes a long time to put on you have to be really careful last week I had really long acrylic nails on that was partly because I was going out and I wanted it. I wanted the nails to match my outfit. I was also I sewed that um, white puffer jacket I wore in last week's episode, and they looked cute in the TikTok of me creating the puffer jacket. But also, I filmed last week a couple of looks in my blue latex dress. So I had long blue like press on nails and they just like match with the dress really cute but then when you go to take the latex off you have to be really careful because it's not like regular fabric if you accidentally like snatch it on anything sharp including an acrylic nail you could just rip the fabric and then like a $300 dress has to go in the bin because you can't stitch it back together it needs special glue and if it's ripped right in the middle then not a seam you, you just can't fix it necessarily so yeah you gotta be really careful and there's just lots of different looks lots of different shots lots of different angles that I'm trying to get also taking photos in every look so that I can make like compilation videos towards the end of the month so it's 
it's been a lot of work and that's why I started with this whole process like two weeks ago so that by the time October started well my goal was that by tomorrow October 1st I would have filmed all of the looks that's not gonna happen I'm going to tonight after recording this film two more sets and then I'm still gonna have two more sets to film in the next couple of days but I still want to get a couple more accessories to go with those looks but Luckily, those looks will be posted towards the end of the month, so I've still got plenty of time, but I just kind of want to get it over and done with now so that I can go into October nice and fresh and focus on just like posting the content and not on making more content. So that way I can focus my like content creation around birthday themed stuff, spring themed, getting into a new fitness journey, which was going to be my my alternate topic for today was going to be talking about routines because I'm recording this on Saturday and the Monday that passed, so five, six days ago now, me and Alejandro started a new like fitness journey. It was his idea and I'm really like happy and proud of us that we've stuck it out this long. It's nothing super dramatic. Sorry, just flicking <laughs> my hair out of my face, but the main goal was just to move our bodies every single day. So, so far we've gone for a couple of walks, a couple of days we've done jogging and another day we did some like strength work in the backyard. We do have a medicine ball and a couple of small hand weights, but they're not that heavy. They're heavy enough for me, but not really heavy enough for Alejandro. So, you know, it could be better, but the point is we're just trying to get back into things and just trying to make it a habit. He's really hoping to get back into rugby soon. The like it's too late to join the club now. They're already going into finals for the year. So even if he joined the club, he wouldn't be able to play in the final because he hasn't played enough games throughout the season. But at least this way by next year, he can like join up in a club and feel like his fitness is at a good baseline because I was going to say if you don't know, but how would any of you know? A couple of years ago, this would be like, well it was five years ago when we first moved here, so that's like seven or eight years ago now, Alejandro moved here for a year after high school and he played for the national rugby team for Uruguay, did a whole lot of training and like some of the guys he used to play with are currently at the World Cup in France, which is really cool. But <laughs> since we moved back here three years ago, he has not played at all. So he played here for a year and then moved to Australia where he played a couple of years just like casual club rugby and then we moved back to Uruguay, the two of us together. The plan was to find a team, join again and like I don't know if he is even interested in getting back to like a national level or anything but just like to get into a team for fun, to make new friends, to exercise. But with the pandemic, that just like was not practical. It didn't happen. And then even when the pandemic cleared up, we just like didn't. It's one of those things we kept meaning to do and then never did. And then, of course, when you take a break from something, like the longer you leave it, the harder it is to get back into it because you know that your body is going to be slower, less fit, less strong than it was before. But at some point, you just have to start. So this week was that start. We are getting out there, getting back into it. I'm really excited for like these next couple of weeks to get out and like take it up a notch. But like today, after I attempted to film this podcast and then just like didn't like how it turned out, we went and did our walk for the day, did a little bit of jogging. I was already wearing my cute little active wear, so it was fine. But the weather's still a little bit cold, which is honestly the perfect time to start any kind of fitness journey, which is again why I wanted to make this episode about routines because when the seasons change again we're going into spring some people are going into autumn or fall whatever the hell you want to call it the seasons are changing the weather is changing and heading into the holidays it's a perfect time to start a new habit now before life gets too crazy and so that well for us by the time it's summer in December and we're on the beach we can just feel a little bit more confident, feel a little bit more relaxed and be able to actually go and do active things with more energy, get less tired, less quick. Like there are so many reasons to do something like this and 
the only real reason not to is, well, there's time, of course, but if you want to live a healthier life, you really just have to make the choice to do it. So we've got out there, we've done it day six, off to a good start. I'm also doing a little bit of like diet planning, but keeping it really casual. I'm not into counting calories. I could create a full meal plan, like down to every single last calorie, macro, nutrients, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not going to do that because I don't think that's really that healthy and it's a lot of work. It's just very dramatic and it's unnecessary. So we're not taking that approach we're going to do a little bit more chill and i'm excited i'm happy with what we've done so far excited to take it up a notch next week and yeah that is kind of the vibe with the fitness journey i will probably talk more about that in the next episode i thought for a moment that i might record two episodes tonight just so i'm getting ahead and i'm not leaving everything to the last minute because right now i'm filming this on saturday the 30th of september and it's going to be posted tomorrow Sunday the 1st of October. Last week was even worse. I ended up posting, no, I filmed, recorded the whole episode on Sunday morning and then edited and uploaded it that same afternoon. So it came out a couple hours later than usual, mostly because Saturday I was so hungover (laughs) that I did not leave the bed except to go to the bathroom or the kitchen. Not really proud of that. Essentially I had a like party to go to Friday night A friend of mine was having some friends over and um, I made the really stupid mistake of forgetting to have dinner. I ate food at like 5 p.m. and I was planning to eat again before we left the house because if you don't know anything about Latin America, the party here, it was like a pre-party, pre-drinks before we went out to the club. Didn't start until like 11.30 and I got there at 12, I think, just after 12. So... Yeah, five might seem like, oh yeah, that's totally dinner. But if you're starting drinking at midnight, there's a lot of hours in between. So I essentially had an empty stomach when I started drinking. I didn't realize that I had an empty stomach. And so the alcohol hit me way too hard. And I have not been that hungover in years. But by Sunday, I had recovered. I sat down, recorded the whole episode, edited it, and uploaded it immediately which potentially was a good thing because I was pretty nervous to post it. I almost did what I'm doing now and sat down and just like re-recorded the whole thing because I wasn't super happy with how it turned out, but I'm trying not to micromanage. I'm trying to be a little bit less of a perfectionist and I think just because it was like a sensitive topic for me, it was probably better that I just like quickly edited through any long pauses it was a very rough edit I just kind of however it came out the first time that is how it's gonna be I you know synced up the audio and the video put it together uploaded on YouTube uploaded the audio to Spotify and that was done so if you listened last week again thank you for the support I don't know if you could tell that the episode was a little bit more rushed than usual I still haven't made any like shorts from that I haven't posted any like teasers to TikTok or to my Instagram I need to get onto that tonight yeah I think I was just I freaked out a little bit after I posted it because it's like a very vulnerable thing to like put yourself out there and talk about stuff in that way and then once I had done it it was like a bit of relief in the moment and like okay push upload it's done but then I was too nervous to read the comments until literally today and then I read them and everyone was so nice so there are there are eight comments currently on the YouTube and all of them are positive sweet normal nice kind comments and yet in my head I don't know what I thought they were gonna be like but I have this weird anxiety around reading comments or opening messages especially from clients or on like my Instagram I It's like I assume I'm going to open it up and find someone being mean to me. And to be fair, that has happened before. Like, I have had some people send me really nasty things. And so I think in my head, that's like a normal thing that happens regularly, even though it's only happened to me a couple of times. And it's definitely not the normal. Most people who message me are so amazingly nice and that I'll miss out on opportunities for to make things for clients or miss out on things my friends are doing or 
miss out on meeting new people because they've invited me to something and I just like didn't open my message requests until two weeks later when the event has already happened. So I'm really trying to work on that, but that's something I should talk to my therapist about and I have a little bit something I'm working on, but that's not easy for me. And I get really in my head about comments and other people's opinions of me because on one level, I really don't care what other people say. But at the same time, if I'm having this anxiety about opening comments or messages, then I clearly do care quite a lot about what people are saying to me. So I I don't really know how to feel about that, how to phrase it. It's like, because if you ask me, oh, like, do you care? No. But I think what it is, is that I do care what other people think, but I don't let it affect my actions. I do whatever I want with my life. I make my own decisions. I I do things that I want to do regardless of how I think that's going to be perceived by other people. However, I do then still get nervous to to learn about how other people perceive me. If that makes any sense. I don't know if that was like a coherent um statement or not, but I'm just going to move a little bit away from the therapy talk because that was not what this was supposed to be about. We're 20 minutes in and honestly, the biggest life update that I have that I've probably talked about in a couple of previous episodes is that we're supposed to be moving houses. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I do know that our landlord wants us out of this house. We don't have a specific like um, definite date that we need to leave by. As far as I'm aware, she originally said, oh, by October slash November. So we're kind of thinking, okay, November then? So that gives us another month, but we've been looking at places for the last month or two and just haven't found anywhere suitable. Originally, we were looking at places in like closer to the city. So I live in Uruguay. I don't live in the capital. The capital is Montevideo and we live, so Montevideo is is like the region, the department around the capital city. We live just on the other side of like the line, the department line. So we technically live in Canelones, a different region. And the like smaller, more specific area we live in is Ciudad de la Costa or City of the Coast. So we live like a very peaceful, quiet, like tranquilo neighborhood. I love it, but it does have its downsides. So the positives of living here, especially in the summertime, which of course we're just heading into, is the beaches here are nicer, they are quieter, there is less traffic, less noise, less people. Generally things are cheaper, you can get way more space, like a better, nicer, bigger house for the same money as like a one bedroom apartment in the city. However, I have been, as I touched on earlier, I've been going out with my friends a little bit more. And if I'm going out at night to the clubs, they are all in the capital city. So I have to go there, which getting there, not that big of a deal. I can get a bus down at like 10 30, 11 30 at night. No problem. Really cheap. There's lots of people around. But then if I want to get the bus back, it's either impossible (laughs) depending on the hour or just like dangerous. So the buses here only run between midnight and 4 a.m. There's almost none. And After four, there is a bus that takes me close to my house, but I would have to walk a while in the dark alone if I'm by myself, which is not very safe. Or if I wait till like 6.30, then I could get a bus that takes me like right in front of my house. So that would be the safer option. But then I have to be out of the club until 6.30 in the morning. The reason I bring all this up is that one big reason to move back to the city would just be the convenience of being able to see friends the fuck that is so weird okay so i have an iced coffee that i've been drinking and i had a glass straw and the straw just like burst off i don't even know how to explain it there's like glass shards on top of my like coffee lid but i didn't nothing touched it it just like broke and now i'm not gonna be able to drink the rest of this coffee because there's going to be little bits of glass in my drink like that is so weird 
I really want to keep drinking it, but I know that's like really dangerous. So comment below if your glass straw has ever spontaneously exploded for no reason. But what I was saying is if we lived back in the city, it would be way easier for me to hang out with my friends, both in the daytime and at night. In the daytime, it's not so bad because I can either get the bus down or drive. If I'm not drinking alcohol, I can just drive the car down and it's fine. But at nighttime, if I'm drinking, I can't do that. And originally, like two months ago, when we started looking for a house, it was also because Alejandro had a new job and he was working two hours away from here. So it takes us an hour on the bus to get to the city. And then from the city, he could get a bus to his work, which was another hour. So he was going to spend four hours a day on the bus to get from here to his job. He no longer has that job. He's working from home, teaching English online and his classes picked up really quickly. And part of me is like, yeah, I mean, I told you so. I told you you would be good at this. I told you you would like it better. So I'm a little bit smug, like mm, I knew this was a good move. But at the same time, it does really complicate our house hunt. I mean, the benefit of him losing his job is that we no longer have to look in that specific area. Like it doesn't really matter where we find a house. We we don't need to be living in that area to like for him to save two hours a day but the negative is that in uruguay to get approved for a new rental they have this thing called a garantia which is just like a guarantee or some kind of rental insurance essentially and to be approved for that you have to go it's based on your income history. My income is already difficult enough because I'm self-employed. So you got to get all your statements, get them verified by a like verified accountant. They got to get their stamp. And then based on that, they'll like tell you basically what, like what price of rent a month they will guarantee that you're able to pay. And because he got fired from his old job it only will be going on my income we no longer have two people's income so even though he has a year's worth of like income history that's essentially irrelevant because he no longer has that job <sighs> which means that we currently pay for reference like thirty thousand pesos for this house and if we go just on my income, not on the joint, we will only be able to qualify for about 17,000 pesos a month. So can we find somewhere decent for that? Sure. It will be a lot smaller than this or in a worse neighborhood than this. And yeah, we're just going to either have to compromise a lot on what we're looking for, really downsize, that we do have two dogs and two cats. So ideally we would like a house that still has a garden that's fenced in and enclosed. And if we were to move back towards the city, yeah, it's more convenient for like socializing, but in terms of day-to-day -day stuff and like the fact that we have dogs and we don't wanna live in an apartment, it just isn't practical to move back there. So I think we're probably actually gonna be looking in this same neighborhood again. We have been these last few weeks looking in this neighborhood and we found a few places that would be suitable but even still, they're like slightly over budget. Like we found one place that was really nice for 20,000. But um, I just don't know that we would be approved for that. And there's really no way around it unless we get someone else to essentially, it's the same as like co-signing with us. If they could like put their income together with ours for the Garantia, then we could potentially get somewhere way nicer because Alejandro, like he's still earning money. And I'm towards the end of the year, I always earn way more. This is like my busiest month, my best month for earning. And I've been working a lot of things behind closed doors that are going to be launching soon. That will be new revenue streams. But um, yeah, my previous, my income from the past year has been a lot less than previously because to get this house, this house is all in my name and was based just on my own income from the previous year. But Alejandro didn't have a job then, so he was working with me, helping me with all my stuff, so my income was like double what it is now. But since he got his job, I kind of cut back what I was doing and focused on building like building projects for the future rather than, rather than earning money in the immediate. So my previous year of income has been a lot lower than it was in the past, also because I did quit doing some of that latex content that I was doing previously. And yeah, my 
my streams of income changed and the amount I was making changed because I was no longer the only one making money. I didn't need to be making as much. But now that's kind of like <laughs> come to bite us in the ass because yeah, we're not going to be able to get a nice place to live unless someone helps us out. So I had a thought today and this will be like our backup option essentially is if our landlord, if our current landlord doesn't change her mind and doesn't just let us keep living here a little while longer, because ideally if she could just let us stay until January or February, then by then we should be able to apply for like a decent home elsewhere. And then we've made it through the summertime. We've lived down the beach, had a relaxing, like chill summer. And then I won't mind wherever we move after that. Or if she really needs us out by November, for example, then I think what we'll probably do is look into some kind of short term rental because a lot of Uruguayans will go down to the beach for like one or two months and we could just find a place like a short term rental, almost like an Airbnb, but cheaper and just live there for a couple of months until we sort out a more permanent solution. That's not ideal and honestly will probably be more expensive in the long run, but again, we have the money, we just don't have the income history to like qualify for all the legal like paperwork shit. So yeah, that's kind of one thing I don't like about living here is it's, there are a lot of boxes you need to tick, a lot of hoops you have to jump through. It's, a lot of it is overcomplicated. Like I understand that they they really focus on security because the country has not always had a lot of security. But for me, it makes my life a lot more difficult, especially because of the nature of my work. I earn money through YouTube, through people buy dresses from me. Like I'm a seamstress. I also earn money through OnlyFans or Patreon or whatever. Like I earn money in lots of different places and through my English classes online. So I have lots of different streams of income in multiple different currencies, entering multiple different bank accounts. And it all just is a nightmare when you try to get it all verified and like overcomplicates a lot of things. But yeah, so in terms of like what that means, I genuinely don't know. I don't know how much longer we're going to be living in this house. So I don't want to put time and effort into making it nice and cleaning it up. And like, we've got a bit of a mold issue in one of the rooms and I want to get that cleaned. But at the same time, it's like the landlord should be paying for that, but she's not going to. So I guess we have to do it. And I'm like, wanting to enjoy my current home but also like I don't want to put too much time and effort into a place that we're going to be leaving soon and with my birthday coming up I really thought that by my birthday we would be living in a new house that we would have a new place it'd be closer to all my friends I could just invite them over for a couple of drinks but here if anyone comes over am I gonna just have them all like stay over and sleep on the floor or are they all going to get the bus home at like six o'clock? Like what, what am I going to do? So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to have to change a lot of my ideas around like my plans for the month, but I'm trying to just live in the moment and not worry so much about the future. Cause I do think that the right place will become available at the right time. I just don't know when that is and surrendering all of that like control is really difficult for me, but I'm going to make it work. I feel like I have covered all of my life updates that I wanted to get through. So just to close out this episode, I wanted to go through a few favorites, like a monthly favorites. I used to do these all the time on YouTube back in the day and they were really fun. I love watching other people's favorites. Mine were never that popular, but I didn't care. It's fun to make and it's fun to look back on things. In terms of favorites, I think I'm going to start with the easiest for me, which is like media, what TV shows or movies I've been loving. And I have been a little bit too obsessed with anime lately. I've been on a real anime kick. I don't know what it is, but if you are not into anime, I don't know, just skip ahead two minutes. But Seriously, you should give it a try. There are, there's like an anime about just about anything. There's like superhero ones or like zombies. Why am I like not being able to think of anything? Like spies, family stuff, like really girly romance shit. Like I have seen a couple. And I'm going to give you a little brief rundown of my current favorites. I just finished rewatching all six seasons of My Hero Academia in the last like two and a half weeks. That is probably one of the most 
popular animes right now. So if you have watched any kind of anime, you probably have at least heard of My Hero Academia. It's like superheroes, people are born with powers, and there are heroes and villains, but they it's the story follows like teenagers going through high school and they're like training to become superheroes. There's a lot more to it than that. It gets really in depth and it's the kind of anime that like there'll be one event and they will make that event happen like over five episodes. So everything is really dragged out but in a good way I guess. It just it goes into a lot of detail about all the fights, all of the like drama. There's like little like tiny bits of like romance but like very like innocent low-key. I don't know it's it's good. Other than that I've been watching oh, Demon Slayer is the other one I binged before I started re-watching My Hero Academia. I've watched both of these series as at least twice all the way through by now. Demon Slayer is also really good. It's about like demon hunters basically. So there are demons that are kind of like vampires I guess but they have like different powers. Some of them are like weird shapes and they'll, I don't know, they kill people basically and like really super strong. And there's this one kid whose whole family gets like brutally murdered except for his little sister and she gets turned into a demon. This is not a spoiler because it all happens in the very first episode but then after that he starts training to become a demon slayer and his little sister Nezuko she is like a good demon she somehow has like superhero control and like doesn't kill people um which is you know she's like my favorite character in the whole thing but there is i think three or four seasons of that and there's six seasons of my hero academia so both of them kind of have a very similar protagonist like young teenage boy with like a heart of gold he just wants to like save people and like protect his family I don't know, they're really like sweet in a re weird way, but then like with a lot of drama in the background because like demons and villains. Um, other than that, I love Spy Hero, <laughs> Spy Hero, Spy X Family. That's really good. It's like there's a spy and then he needs to have a wife and daughter for a, a mission. So he adopts this girl from an orphanage and she, he doesn't know this, but she is a telepath so she can read minds. And then he needs a fake wife and he meets this girl who like agrees to go along with the plan. She doesn't know that he's a spy. He doesn't know that she's an assassin. It's, it sounds so ridiculous, but trust me, give it a go. It's like, again, really wholesome in a weird kind of way. And I am really into it. Um, but other than anime, one show I was watching recently is Spanish. It's Mexican on Netflix. You can watch it in English, dubbed, I think, but I've been watching it in Spanish because the whole point is I'm trying to immerse myself more in the Spanish language so I can learn better. But because it's like very Mexican, a lot of the phrases and like slang just like doesn't translate to here, but it's still, it's still helping with me with becoming a little bit more confident and building my sentence structures and stuff. So the English title on like my Netflix, because my Netflix is set to English, it's called Daughter from Another Mother, but I think the actual title is Los Madre, oh, Madres Hay Dos, like mothers have two. I don't know if there's some kind of like history with that name, because I honestly don't understand the title, but essentially there are two mums, they give birth on the same day to daughters, and the daughters get swapped at birth. But then in order to fix that, they end up moving in together because they both like fell in love with this baby that they then have to like give to another couple and then they get their own baby back, their biological baby. But it's like, I don't know this kid. So yeah, they end up moving in together to try to like stay with both babies and keep the babies together so they don't have to like be separated from this child that they've raised for like a couple of months. So that's the premise of that show. I'm on season three. And yeah, it's really good. It's like telenovela style, I guess. Like it is very dramatic, but more realistic than the animes, of course. Um, that's the only other thing I can think of that I've been watching a lot of recently. My favorite foods or drinks. I don't know, I've been drinking a lot of iced coffee, but this one is now, I'm gonna have to put it through a strainer trying to get all the glass bits out so I can finish off my drink. Um, 
I don't know. Other than that, I've genuinely been eating the same things as always. I love making black bean burritos. Favorite things to do. Uh, I don't know. I've been sewing a lot more recently, like stuff for myself, which I'm really enjoying. Like that white jacket I wore last week. I'm actually attempting, no, I am creating a capsule wardrobe for myself. I want to have a wardrobe full of stuff that I've made that I love, like unique one-off pieces so that when I go out and about, I can just like find things that I've made for myself that I love, that are cool, that are like the other people are going to be interested in. I'm filming the process and like sharing them on my TikTok. And yeah, that's been really fun for me lately. It's taking a bit of the pressure off instead of trying to make pieces that I think other people are going to want to buy. I'm just making stuff for myself. And then if someone else sees a video of mine and thinks, oh, hey, that looks really cute. Could you make me one too? Then sure, I'll tell them a price and I could make them one as well. But otherwise eventually I want to get into like I would love to hire someone who's good at pattern making and have them like create patterns from the things that I make that are downloadable and sellable on like Etsy that would be really cool but I am not a professional pattern maker I know how to make things in my own size and I do know how to make things in other people's sizes but in terms of like grading patterns to be like size inclusive it's a lot of work and getting them all digitized and printable it's just like it's something I know I could learn to do myself but if I wanted to do that I would have to cut back on something else I'm doing there's just there's not enough time in the day in the week in my life to take on a new hobby right now and that is just too much work and not something I'm ready to commit to but I am ready to commit to having cute clothes and making them myself. So I can make all the things, I can even film the process and teach other people how to make them themselves, but I can't like, I can't get into the pattern making as well. That's just gonna be too much. But yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really thought I was gonna have more favorites, but I guess like, oh, I'm really loving like more pastel colors. Like if you're watching this instead of just listening, I'm wearing these like pistachio mint green leggings and like a beige puffer because I did my, I got color, no, I had a friend of mine analyze my color season, if you saw any of those videos floating around the internet of like what season are you and I am, I think it was soft, soft spring, soft summer, I can't even remember what, I'll post it on my Instagram as well as a couple other of the Actually, yeah, I will post on my Instagram more of my favorites. So go check that out if you're interested. And I will also post my like color season because I can't think of it off the top of my head. But essentially like dark colors or really bright colors are not great for me. But pastels and more neutrals are more my vibe, which I guess I kind of always knew. But I just kept trying to wear like black or like red because those are popular colors. But on me, it just like is too intense. But I'm also really loving these headphones, like, they're not the best quality headphones, but I love them for the aesthetic. Um, yeah, that's really all I can think of. <laughs> that's, that's all I can think of today. So, so yeah, that is going to be it for today's episode. A little bit of a chill, catch up, get to know me, life update kind of a vibe. If you have any questions, you know the drill, comment comment here or over on my Instagram. If you want to show me support with this podcast, please give it a like or rate or review. If you're on Spotify, it would really help me in getting this podcast out to more people. If you have any episode suggestions, requests, please let me know. Again, comment on YouTube or send me a message over on Instagram and I will be sure to add it to my list. But otherwise, gracias por escuchar. Thank you for listening. Besitos. And see you next time. Of being able to see friends. What the f